Hey everybody, my name is Scary Spikes, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. In today's video, we're going to be going directly to jail, but before we do that, I just want to thank one of our VIP Gold contributors, and this week, that's going to be Ice Green Hemp. Ice has been with us for quite some time now, and he's been a very active and friendly, as well as very supportive member of our community, so Ice, thank you so much for continuing to support what I do here, as well as the community as a whole. I very much appreciate it. If you'd like to join us live on stream, I stream Wednesdays and Fridays over at Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern. We also have an amazing Discord community that I'm sure you would love. Links for those can be found down below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. All right, so we're kind of hanging out above Hurston here, just outside Everest Harbor, but still well within its armistice zone. I'll explain that in just a little bit. And we're going to go through some basics here for some of the newer players since we've had a great influx of them during the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo in late November. So if you're a relatively new player and you would like to know what a crime stat is, how they work, how they affect you, and how to potentially get rid of them, then make sure to watch this part. If you're a slightly more advanced player, then you may want to skip this to a more relevant part of the video, and that's okay. I've left chaptering in the seek bar as well as time codes in the description for your convenience. All right, so in order to understand how to get and remove a crime stat, we first need to understand what a crime stat is. A crime stat is very simply a numerical representation of the amount of crimes you've committed and also the severity of those crimes. It ranges from one through five, one being the least severe and five being the most severe. You can see what your crime stat is, and the only exception to this is if you happen to be in Grimhex, which means that your crime stat will never show because Grimhex is basically criminal haven. So. If you look under your username and just to the right of your balance here, you'll see that we don't have a crime stat at all, but this will range anywhere between one through five, and it gives you a few indications. The first indication that it gives you is how severe and how many crimes you've committed, although it doesn't really give you too many details, but more on that in a little bit. The other thing it tells you is how actively you're going to be pursued both by other civilians and bounty hunters, and of course by the UEE Navy as well. While you might get away with paying a fine for a crime stat of one, you might not be so lucky with a crime stat of three once people start getting missions to come and hunt you down. And at four or five, you are extremely wanted and the UEE Navy starts to respond if you happen to show up and you were near public areas like the r, &R station behind us. Before we move on to the next topic, let's talk about the two icons on the top right hand corner of your screen. These are very important because they'll be instrumental in helping you to prevent getting a crime stat, whether you want to be up to no good or not. The one on the right hand side lets you know that you're currently in an armistice zone. This could be in an armistice zone at a landing area, for example, Lorville, Area 18, New Babbage, or Orison, in which your ship's weapons are completely disabled and you're not able to fire on anything. However, it doesn't work the same way if you happen to be in the armistice zone of an r, &R station like the one behind us, Everest Harbor, or any of the other ones floating above their respective planets. That armistice zone basically just means that you shouldn't be firing on anyone, especially any civilians or security personnel, but you are able to fire on those who have a crime stat, which will appear as red targets. Firing on anyone else other than that will result in a violation of the armistice zone as well as charges ranging from assault all the way up to murder and anything in between. So as long as that icon is there, just be mindful of your weapons and you can turn them off by pressing P to prevent any accidental discharge. Giggity. The icon right next to that that looks like a satellite indicates that you're within range of a comlink. Comlinks are satellites that float above different planets and moons around Stanton and help to relay to the authorities any information about folks committing crimes within their reach. If you happen to do so and you're still not within Armistice Zone, you will still get a crime stat, and you can disable these in order to prevent that from happening, although that might be in a video down the line, so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. That being said, if you happen to go to a place where you know a comlink exists and you're trying to trade or mine, and you don't see that icon there, it means the comm link for that area is offline and you should proceed with caution. Now, whether those four homicide charges in the armistice zone violation that you were charged with might be debatable, what happens when you get caught with a crime stat is not. There's only two things that'll happen, one of which will be you'll either surrender to or get blown up by security forces or the bounty hunters that are chasing you, which is no bueno and will result in you going directly to jail. But of course, the other option is you just happen to fly into an asteroid like I always do, and you'll end up waking up here in Grim Hex. Now, at this point, you've got a couple of options. You can submit to your conscience and go and talk to the authorities and let them know how this was just a whole big misunderstanding, 
or you can go and get yourself a crypto key and clear your name by hacking into a security terminal. Let's go with that one. So in order to do that, you're going to need a Tiger Claw. The Tiger Claw is currently the only known crypto key available in the game as the rest were taken out in a previous patch, hopefully for balancing purposes. And you can get yourself a crypto key or a number of them right here at Grim Hex. You can also, of course, get them at New Babbage at the Factory Line store. Follow me and I'll show you where to get them and how to use them. Grim Hex can definitely be a very confusing place, especially for new players. So if you do wake up here, just make note of a few things. First of all, you're going to be waking up at a place called the Main Concourse in one of four habitations. Hab A, B, C, or D. You're going to be out here on the second floor, so as soon as you wake up, you'll want to make your way outside your room, go down the main hallway towards the exit sign, walk through the double doors, and then you'll be on the second floor of the Main Concourse seen here. You'll have a bar on the main floor at the bottom between two elevators, which can take you up to clinics as well as hangars if you'd like to take your leave early. Of course, if you have a level 1 crime stat, which can be reduced by simply paying fines, you can do so with one of the two terminals available on the second floor of the main concourse. One of them is here, beside the Ahab, and the other one is on the other side, beside the Dhab. If your crime stat is far worse than that, you'll definitely need a tool to hack it down, and in order to buy one, you'll need to come down here. This is a little room found just below the Ahab on the first floor of the main concourse, You'll want to walk through and follow the arrow down the stairs and make your first right. This is where you're going to be able to purchase your Tiger Claws, and as many of them as there are here, they're all exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. Unfortunately, there's no terminal here that allows you to buy multiples of these, so you will have to strain through buying each one individually, and I'm hoping that's something that CIG might fix in the future. To buy one, simply walk up to it, hold F to open your inner thought menu, and press left mouse button on where it says buy. Make note that it costs 999 UBC, and then simply press the big green button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen to purchase yours. Also note that you might want to get a few of these because in most cases you will encounter some bugs where you're going to have to use a second or a third one or you may be with a friend that needs one and didn't have the foresight to get one. When you've got all that you need, just simply head back out through the door here, run up the steps, make your way over to the elevators, and simply take the elevator up to the lobby. At this point, we're going to be heading out to a place called Security Post Korea to fix your crime stat. Once you're here, you can also visit the clinic to register your imprint just in case something goes wrong. You simply walk towards the ASAP terminals and hang a left, and the clinic is just down the hall. Before you leave, make sure to take your crypto keys with you because they'll be completely useless back here when you're trying to go and clear your crime stat. So in order to do that, just press I to access your local inventory. Click on the filters button. Click on utility. And all of your tiger claws will be available here. And you can simply double click on any of them that you'd like to equip. So we're just going to take a few with us today. With our tiger claws in hand, we are now ready to go and hack down our crime stat once and for all. There's a couple of options here, but since we're in Crusader, we're going to go over to SPK, a space station otherwise known as Security Post Korea. It's a place that you can go to hack down your crime stat. There are also options available for you at ground stations on Hurston and Arcourt, but since we're at Crusader, we're going to head over to SPK as it's a little bit faster. The only downside to this is it is a very well-known area for criminals to visit that like to hack down their crime stats after being naughty. And so there's often quite a few players here and bounty hunters looking for action. And then of course, the space station itself is also armed with guns that can fire at you if you do have a crime stat. Of course, there are also missions that trigger guards to spawn inside the station. So that is something else to keep an eye on as well. Once you've gotten here though, simply approach the station and land your ship on any of the pads. Make your way inside very carefully. Now at the moment for demonstration purposes, I obviously don't have a crime stat just to make it a little bit easier to approach this station and show you how it's done. But you will be fired upon by the guns on the pads here if you do have a crime stat. So just be wary of that. Flying is something like the Redeemer with two size three shields is definitely beneficial. And if you happen to have one or your friend does, it's definitely worth borrowing it for the mission. Let's go outside and I'll show you how to actually get the job done. When entering the main building, you might want to be very careful and very quiet. Keep in mind that there's probably going to be other people here trying to clear their crime stats or bounty hunters waiting and hiding to kill you. There may also be NPCs around the building, so it's always a good idea to do a facility sweep before you do anything else. Once you're happy that everything is nice and clean though, you can start making your way to the middle room, which is on the main floor, and start hacking down your crime stat using the terminal there. 
just keep in mind that you're going to be extremely vulnerable in this situation because there's a lot of open windows and a lot of different places and corridors that people can come from without you being able to see them. So doing this with friends is always recommended. When you're ready to start, you'll need to do a few things. First of all, you'll need to holster your weapon and take out your Tiger Claw. You can do that by holding R and then holding C to bring up your wheel and select any of the Tiger Claws here. You should be holding it in your hand even though I can't seem to see it. But once you do, you should have the option to insert it by holding F to open up your inner thought system and clicking the left mouse button. Once the crypto key is inserted, you're going to get a few options. But of course, you will need to wait for it to hack the system and access your files. This can take some time. In the meantime, make sure that you have your weapon out and keep a vigilant eye out for anybody else that might be on their way to kill you. Of course, if you have friends, this becomes a lot easier, but this is something you'll have to do every time you want to clear your crime stat. The Tiger Claw should be able to access the system automatically in most cases, but sometimes the progress will be halted and you'll need to move it forward manually. You'll have a countdown here and you'll need to click on the continue button before the countdown expires in order to keep it going and eventually gain access to the system. You can do this by looking at the screen, holding F to enter your inner thought menu and simply clicking on continue. Just keep an eye on this and make sure that it gets all the way through all of the bars before it will allow you to access your system and scrub your records clean. Once the crypto key has accessed the system successfully, you'll get this message and you'll simply need to click on exit crypto key and it'll request all of the records that are attributed to you. And now in this case, of course, I don't have a crime stat myself, but once you're on this screen, you'll see a number of different crimes that you have committed on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, you should see some buttons that'll say dismiss. You can click on the dismiss button, at which point you'll get a list of different reasons why the charge should be dismissed. Feel free to choose any of them. Mental incompetency is always my favorite and simply work your way through all of the charges until there are none left. When there's nothing left, you can simply click on log out and at this point, you're good to go. You can simply get back into your ship and move along like the law-abiding citizen that you are. If you end up having to surrender to security forces or seeing them or bounty hunters blow up your ship while you have a crime stat, there's only one place you're going to go and that is the Clusher Rehabilitation Center or as I like to call it, Hotel K. Now, there's only two ways to get out of prison. Either you escape or you do your time. Now, time is real time, of course, so whether you spend that time in the game or you alt F4 and come back when your sentence is over only to see yourself walking out of prison a free man or woman, it doesn't really matter. But you can expedite that by going into the work release program, which is what we'll be doing today. All right, so if you're ready to get into the work release program, simply approach the monitor on the left hand side of the door in your cell, hold F to enter the inner thought menu and just left mouse button click on the enroll button. Okay, so once you've done that, you can leave your cell and let's make our way over to the central area of the prison to see how much time we have to serve. All right, so once you make your way out of your cell, make your way down to the center area here right at the uh, middle of the prison, which is in between where you go to work and between where you go to get released. You're going to see a couple of panels here. You can approach any one of them and use your inner thought system to interact with it. And this is going to show you how your sentence is going to play out. So the white is representative of the amount of time that you've already served and the red is representative of how much you've got to go alongside, of course, the timer down here, which will eventually tick down to your inevitable release. Now, never mind what you heard inside of your cell when we applied for the work release program with respect to grabbing your multi-tool, because as you can see there, we've got one on the belt already. So you don't need to stop by the commissary on the way to the mining tunnels to grab your own because yours is already provided for you. If you're looking to extend your stay at Hotel K, then you might be interested in the commissary units. The commissary machines are available for you on the way out just before the airlock leading to the mining tunnels and they can sell you a number of different items, which can be very valuable, especially if you're planning on staying in the tunnels for a longer period of time, such as the OxyPen, which will allow you to maintain your oxygen levels. Now, it's important to note that these things are not purchasable without merits and of course you'll need to get some merits first in order to buy those items. It's also important to note that merits do not exist outside of the prison system like they used to. So you can't simply farm merits, send them to your friend, get out of prison and have them send them back to you like you used to be able to do. That unfortunately no longer works and so it's just advisable to get all the mining and missions out of the way that will just allow you to exit the prison and simply move along with your day. Let's go into the mining tunnels and see how this all works. Now keep in mind that once you go through the airlock here, the oxygen in your suit will deplete. So it's very important to keep an eye on it 
and to make sure that you're using oxy pens if you have them or refill stations which are available every five to six levels in each of the three mining tunnels seen here we have mining tunnel number one number two and number three and this is very important to keep an eye on because the missions that you get here will send you to specific tunnels to fix specific oxygen dispensing machines if you're only doing mining it honestly doesn't really matter and you can pick whichever tunnel you like so as I mentioned before, one of the two ways of reducing your sentence here at Hotel K is of course to do some missions, and in my opinion this is the easier of the two ways to do it. It's also a little bit more fun and it just kind of gets you out of prison a lot faster. So press F1 to open up your Moby Glass, go over to your contracts, and you'll see a mission in the general tab under maintenance which says inmates maintenance opportunity. That's not going to tell you much here other than to tell you that you're going to get at least 5,000 and upwards of 15,000 merits when you complete the mission and this depends on how far deep the oxygen dispensing machine that you need to fix is. Now keep in mind that each second correlates to one merit so if you get 10 merits that means 10 seconds is coming off your sentence. So 5,000 means 5,000 seconds and 15,000 merits means 15,000 seconds. You do the math on how many minutes and hours that is. In any case, we're going to go ahead and accept the offer here. And as soon as we do so, we can see on the top of the screen there, it's going to show us repair 02 kiosk in route three, depth 12. So you really don't want to be paying attention to that first thing there. You just want to know which route it is and how deep you need to go. Giggity. So in this case, it's going to be route three, which is going to be that tunnel over there. And this is telling us that we need to go to a depth of 12. Let's go ahead and fix this machine. One thing that you might notice when you're running through these tunnels is these stations here. These stations will serve to refill your oxygen to make sure that you don't get oxygen starved when you're doing your missions or you're mining within the tunnels. Again, simply walk up to them, hold F to open up your inner thought menu, click left mouse button, and then simply click on the transfer oxygen button and watch your oxygen get transferred from the machine into your suit. All right, so we finally made it to the depth of 12 in route number three. And as you can see, we've got a non-functioning unit here. So again, all we need to do is just hold F and click on the left mouse button and simply click on vent. All right, there we go. And now everything is fixed. And once it is fixed, you should be able to siphon a little bit of oxygen from the system for the trip back as well. At this point, you should have enough merits to get out of prison if your crime stat was low enough, which for me is the case. But of course, I'm still going to show you how to mine in prison so that you can make sure that you get uh, some enjoyment out of that and learn a new skill if it's something you'd like to do. If you enjoy mining and you want to do a little bit of mining to get yourself out of prison a little bit earlier, then I've got some bad news for you. And that is that at the filming of this video at patch 3.15.1, unfortunately, the rocks are completely bugged out and you're not able to mine them at all. Nevertheless, I'm going to do my best to show you how you would do it when they get fixed. And hopefully with 316 just around the corner, we'll see that fix come into effect. So first and foremost, you want to press T to light up your torch so that you can see a little bit better and be able to identify these rocks based on their color. And you'll notice that we're looking at a big red one here. And unfortunately, the red ones are not mineable at all because you'll see them pretty much everywhere. Okay, so you're going to want to look for different colors. And one such example is going to be the blue and yellow. As you can see, there's some very light marbling there with the blue and yellow colors, and that's pretty much what you're looking for. There are some different colors available as well, like purple and green and stuff like that, but uh, any of these will do as long as they're not red, you're pretty much good to go. Now, contrary to what you hear at the terminal when you sign up for the work release program in your cell, you do have a multi-tool with mining attachment given to you as soon as you enter prison, so you don't have to worry about going to the commissary. Simply press 4 to bring your multi-tool out and right mouse click to bring up this little menu. Now on this menu, generally speaking on the right hand side here, you should be able to see the results of what should otherwise be a scan when you're looking at one of these rocks with your multi-tool, uh, which should tell you the contents of the rock and what you can expect to mine. And you can press the left mouse button to start the mining laser. As you can see, we can start the mining laser, but unfortunately it's not doing anything to this rock. Now, generally speaking, you'd be able to use the mouse wheel up and down to respectively increase and decrease the power of the laser. And you should also be able to see a little menu on the left hand side here, or more so a bar, which should give you an indication of a red zone up here, a green zone somewhere in the middle, usually a very thin one, and then a yellow or clear zone down below. 
generally speaking, what you're looking to do is you're looking to balance the power, which you'll see right over here, of the laser versus the actual bar on the left hand side and you'll want to manage the power of the mining laser with your mouse wheel in order to keep the indicator in the green as much as possible do that until the rock is broken and then you're good to go simply then just put your multi-tool away by holding the r key and then you can hold f to enter your inner thought menu and press left mouse button to pick up the chunks of rock that break away Okay, so once you've made it back from the mining tunnels, before you go back in, of course, you do want to deposit your minerals. Now, of course, I don't have any because I wasn't able to mine any, but this is how you'd be able to do it. You've got these mineral deposit terminals here. Simply just hold F again, as always, to enter your inner thought menu. Left click, and then you can simply deposit everything that you have. Now, the transaction did fail here because, of course, I don't have anything, but yours should go through just fine. If you continue to have that issue, though, even though you have minerals on you, you may want to just log out and log back in, and that should help to fix your problem. Once you're done, simply walk back into the prison, and it's time to get released. When you're ready to join the world of all the other law-abiding citizens, simply make your way back to the central area of the prison, and the exit is going to be literally right across the way from where you came from, exiting the mines. So simply make your way all the way down this hallway here and trigger the elevator and listen to the nice little announcement. All right, perfect. So all you need to do at this point is just call one of the two elevators here. And as soon as it comes down, obviously just take it up to the surface. And of course, there'll be a little bit of a black screen, but after that, you should see yourself waking up in Everest Harbor and then you can be on your way to live your law abiding life. Thank you so very much for watching this video and for making it all the way until the end. It was definitely a doozy and a ton of work. So if you enjoyed the video or even found it mildly helpful or entertaining, please let me know by leaving a like down below and making sure to subscribe if you're new and ring that bell so that you never miss a video in the future. It would really also mean a lot to me if you shared this video with your friends and your community members so that we can help as many folks as we can. You can join me live Wednesdays and Fridays over on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern and of course our amazing Discord community. Can't wait to see you guys there and the links for those can be found down below. Again, thank you so very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Yeah.